Sonia Gallego, Al Jazeera. And uh, there's no end to the aftershocks that continue to rock Japan. More than 50 tremors, some of them to magnitude of six and higher, have rattled the country. Dr. Bruce Malamud is an expert in natural and environmental hazards at King's College London. He joins us live now. Thank you very much indeed for, for your time. So can you describe what the scale of these aftershocks is and, and how long they're likely to carry on? Yeah, well, the scale of the aftershocks is that these could continue for days, weeks, sometimes even for months and years. And what we're particularly concerned about is after this main shock, the basic energy redistributed stress amongst a large area of the Earth all along 500 kilometers of the fault line. And the concern is that's redistributed the stress and will result in further redistribution so that we result in more uh, aftershocks. Um, we saw one example this morning, a magnitude 7.1 which was very large and in fact about 30 times larger than the earthquake in uh, New Zealand in February. So we are very concerned that there will be more aftershocks. These could actually trigger other tsunamis. They could trigger redistributions and result in instabilities which were brought forth with the main shock becoming even more unstable. I mean, in the situation, with the, you referred there to New Zealand briefly, um, they seem to think that the earthquake, that the recent devastating earthquake in Christchurch was actually an aftershock of a previous earthquake. Um, is that, do you think that this, we could end up with something that's even bigger than what we've just had? Well, I mean, the very definition of an aftershock is that it is smaller in the total energy released or the magnitude than the main shock. So in the case of New Zealand, there was a magnitude 7, which was in September 2010. And there was a series of hundreds of aftershocks after that, which the 6.3 that occurred in Christchurch was just one of them. Now, there are some questions right now amongst the seismologists whether, in fact, this was an aftershock because it was on a slightly different part of the fault system from the main shock for New Zealand. So yes, we do expect to have other shocks that occur. We don't expect them to be bigger than the magnitude 8.9. Although what? we do have cases, yes, yeah, please. No, I was just going to say, you mentioned also this idea of redistributed stress. Um, does that mean that you mm. could end up with earthquakes somewhere quite far away from what the, where, the one we've just seen? I mean, is that what you meant? Yeah, the redistribution of the stress will basically transfer itself along a fault line or along the subduction zone. And this could be many, many hundreds of kilometers away. And if you look at a map of the recent aftershocks that have occurred in the last 24 hours, you'll see them distributed along a whole area surrounding both sides of Japan. So this is a very large area where the aftershocks can be distributed. Always one kind of zone of instability leading into another zone of instability. So yes, they can be quite far, but we're not talking thousands of kilometers away. So we're not talking about a main shock triggering something on the other side of the world. And that is one concern that people are expressing, is that somehow all these earthquakes that have occurred recently are somehow related. And they're not. I mean, these are random occurrences around the Earth that have been occurring, with each one having its own sequence of aftershocks. OK. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Bruce Malamud, for bringing us your insight there. Uh, fascinating uh, about those aftershocks. Thank you. Uh, let's move to Libya now, where Muammar Gaddafi's forces... Are